All right, y'all, what is up? And welcome back to, once again, another video out here on Galveston Bay. It's another beautiful day. We have some cloud cover out here. It's a little cold. It was like 55 degrees this morning. A little bit of wind, but not too bad. The water looks all right, stained. But like I said, it's pretty decent today. So the goal for this video is to go out here and catch a crap ton of sheep's head. We have a few people on the boat. So the ideal day would be like three, four limits of sheep's head, something like that. But so far, it's been a little slow. We've been fishing for a few hours and we have one keeper black drum in the box that Brian caught right here. And then we've had a few bites and a few missed opportunities, but we're just out here at the jetty, as you can see. We're just gonna be running up and down the jetty for the rest of the morning, trying to pick off some sheep's head. So we have miles of rocks to fish. Y'all stick with it, stay tuned. Let's see what we can get into. All right, y'all, so we pulled it to the rocks right here. All we did was just pick out a spot. Really anything's just as good as the other, but when I am fishing the jetty, I like to look for something that is slightly different. So if you have all these flat rocks right here and then you have one that's sticking out like this, we actually pulled over to the south jetty, so it's pretty much all broken out like this. But if you were on the north jetty, you notice that they're all pretty uniform and then there might be a little divot or something that's a little different. So we pulled up here and all I have is a little shrimp right here with a little two-aught circle hook and a small little split shot. We're just going to pitch it up in there. This is one way you can fish for them. You can also use a single drop rig or something like that. But this is how we're going to start out. And all we're doing is casting it up, letting it sink down, and waiting to feel that little signature sheep's head thump. So if we don't feel anything here, then like I said, we have all these rocks. This is basically our playground today. We just got to find the fish. So if we don't feel anything here, if we don't get a bite here, we can just move down 50, 60 yards, try again until we get onto a school of them. And a lot of times where you catch one sheep's head, you'll catch multiple. So the goal is to find the little group, the little school of them, and then catch as many as you can until they get smart on you, move spots and try again. When I'm free lining a shrimp like this, I like to get it up as close as I can. A lot of times when I'm throwing a single drop rig, which is like this right here, we have a one ounce bank weight and then a little circle tied off to that. You can see. If you're throwing those, I cast them close to the rocks, but not as close because they will get snagged very easily. So we're just gonna let this shrimp do his thing and swim around and hopefully we'll hook into something. So we've been fishing on the jetties for a few hours now and it's just really slow we have one keeper black drum but that's about it so i think we're gonna run into the bay a little more i think we might go try to flip some docks over in west bay or something like that see if the sheep's head are up in there because that wind's picking up a little bit it's getting a little choppy out here and uh we just want to get out of it stay warm and see if we can hook into something because it's not happening right here so y'all stay tuned y'all so we pulled up in these docks right here and what we're doing is just taking a shrimp right here Nolan and Brian are using single drop rigs and I'm just using a shrimp with a split shot and we're just flicking up under the dock or close to it see if anything comes out for it water's pretty low right now we've worked about two three docks so far and this is the first one where we started to get bites so maybe as we work our way down the channel it gets a little deeper we'll start to get some more bites but go out here is sheep's head redfish as y'all know it's whatever bites so we fished all these docks down here, at least a lot of them. They weren't holding anything at all. So now we're gonna pull out, we're gonna fish a couple reefs out in the middle of the bay right here, see if we can catch anything, and then if not, we're gonna head home. Okay, so we just pulled up to the last spot of the day. We have this reef right here, you can see it marking right there. Bunch of scattered oyster coming all the way out here, and then deep, real deep, 10 to 12 foot hole, maybe up to 14 feet right here. We're just gonna cast on the edge of it, hoping that those fish are sitting down off the reef going down into the hole but we're just gonna poke around and see if we can find them hopefully we can catch some trout redfish things like that we've kind of given up on the sheep's head as it's not really working out so let's spot lock here and get some shrimp in the water all right y'all so the fishing is pretty slow right now and i figured because of that this is a great time to tell y'all about these boots right here that i'm wearing so the last few videos i've been wearing these if you haven't noticed already and these are from a company called high c so they reached out they wanted to send me a pair of their deck boots and they want me to show them to you guys and test them out so like I said, I've been wearing them for a few weeks now and I absolutely love them. They're super comfortable. I can wear them all day. Lots of support in there. They grab your ankle real nice. And the plus side guys, these are deck boots, so they're waterproof and they're non-slip on the boat. 
But as y'all know, it is winter right now. It's the middle of January. The water's nice and cold, and there's nothing worse than being on the boat and having cold feet. So that's where these boots really come into play. Like I said, they are deck boots. They are made for the boat. But from the videos that y'all are watching right now, you can see that I've been wearing them everywhere. I use them at the jetty to hop down rocks, and I use them all over the beaches and stuff like that to really test them out. If you're from the area, we've been having a lot of wet, cold, rainy weather lately, and I'm so tired of getting all my shoes soaking wet and ruining them. So I've been wearing these, honestly, just all around town, and I like them a lot. If you want to check them out, I will have everything linked down below. Like I said, the company is called High C H I S E A. So whenever I'm showing y'all products like these, as these companies are sitting out, I'm not just gonna show y'all stuff that I wouldn't use myself and I wouldn't wear myself and stuff that is not of the highest quality. But with that being said, guys, I think we're about to reel in the rods, head back to the ramp, and we'll see y'all there. Okay, so we are off the water right now, unloading the boat. Got to put back on the trailer, and we're about to head to the ramp and clean it up. But real quick, I want to let y'all know that even though I did not catch any keeper fish today, I am still going to be doing a catch and cook for you guys. So make sure you stay tuned for that. After we clean the boat, I'll see y'all at the house to tell y'all what we're cooking up. So in a snap of a finger, just like that, we'll be in the kitchen. All right, guys, so we're back at the house right now. And like I said, even though I didn't catch anything, we're still gonna be doing a catch and cook. And that is because Brian, who's on the boat with us, donated his perfect 15 inch drum right here for the catch and cook. So in my opinion, drum are just as good as redfish to eat. Actually, I've had it a couple times where I said it's even better than redfish. But we're gonna go ahead and clean this guy up for y'all. So you can come over here and take a look. This is a 15 inch drum. Drum only has to be 14 inches to keep. They have a slot, it's 14 to, I don't quite remember right now what the upper slot is, but I'll put it on the screen. So all we're gonna be doing here is we're just gonna be taking the guts out and then we're gonna be using this, which is a fish scaler, to rip all the scales off of it because I am going to be frying this thing whole. I'm probably gonna go ahead and cut the head off, but first thing I'm gonna do is cut the guts out. So we're gonna go ahead and start right here on the bottom side of these fins, poke down in there, and we're just gonna make a shallow cut so we don't poke all the guts and taint the meat. Right along the edge. There we go, and then we come back up and go the other way. All the way up into the head. Now we can open this thing up, and you're gonna have to kind of break these bones out a little bit. Just like that. Reach in there, go ahead and get dirty. Rip all those guts right out. That's its stomach right there, we can see what it was eating. There's a shrimp, probably the one that we caught it on. So, there you go. But we're just gonna keep ripping all this stuff out. This is a swim bladder right here. This white thing, this will keep it straight up and down in the water. We'll rip that out too. You just gotta get everything out of here. Can't be afraid to get dirty with it. Wear gloves if you want. But make sure you break it all the way up into the head. And if we were leaving the head on here whenever we cooked it whole, then what we do is we come in here and we rip out the gills just like this, which I have left the head on there, but you just come up in here, grab the gills and rip them out, and you can rip out the whole gill plate. Just like that. But that's not gonna matter today, because like I said, we are gonna cut it off right here. So after you get the guts ripped out, obviously there's still a little bit in here that we'll pull out, but. Have you getting ripped out? We're just gonna rinse out with water, we get it nice and clean, get all this blood out of there so there's no real extra fishy taste, which usually comes from the blood. And then we will go ahead and scale it. So I'm gonna get that done and then I'll come back to y'all. So we washed out most of this, cleaned up a little bit. Another thing you could do besides just using water is run it in a tub with some lime juice and water, lemon juice, any type of citrus juice, and that's gonna help clean it up too and knock off all that crap. So next thing we're gonna do is scale it. This is a scaler right here. You absolutely do not have to have this, it is optional. You could just use a spoon. Or you could use like a butter knife or something like this, but these things are like $2 at Academy, so why not have one? It makes it easy. And you just run it against the scales. And you can see they all just fall off right there. You wanna make sure you do it all over. Get every single scale all the way down to the tail, all the way up under here. This is like a 15 inch drum, so lower end of the slot there. But in my opinion, guys, fish that are smaller or on the lower end of the slot are always going to be better tasting. Their meat's usually um, nice and flaky, not as tough as the bigger fish, and they usually have way less worms. So. so it looks like we have pretty much all these scales on here. We're gonna go ahead and give it one more rinse, and then we're gonna be ready to score this thing up, put a little bit of flour on there, and throw it in the fryer. Y'all stay tuned. So we got the fish cleaned up right here, completely scaled. As you can see, I washed out the inside, it's looking good. So we're just gonna be frying this whole thing up. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take this 
we're going to score the fish. We're just going to make cuts like this all the way down to the backbone. And we're going to do this to both sides. We want it to be about an inch wide. And then we're going to take it and cut it the other way. So we're making kind of like little cubes here. And then after we fry it, those will fall off and they'll be super easy to eat. And they'll flake right off of the bones. So we're going to do that. We're going to flip it over do the same thing to the other side. All right, now that we have our fish scored, the next thing we're gonna do is season it up. So you just use whatever seasoning you want and you're gonna to wanna to bend it so you can get in between all these cracks, you see? Just like that. And get a lot of seasoning up in there. Rub it around all over, get it down in the cracks. The same thing we're gonna do this to both sides and we're also gonna do this to the inside. Can bend the fish. Right, now we're gonna throw it in the bowl. We're gonna go ahead and add some flour and cornstarch. So I have a 50-50 mix of flour and cornstarch right here. The reason I mix the cornstarch in there is because it'll make it uh, because it'll make it lighter and it'll make it really crunchy. So just like with the seasoning, you want to get this down in the cracks as best as you can. So dump some on there. Get some on this side. We'll just work on getting that everywhere so it's completely covered. As you can tell, we're not putting on egg or anything like that. So whatever falls off will fall off. We're just going for a nice light coating here. So we can just rub it down in there. That's what we did in a bowl. You want to make sure you get it on the inside too. And those will help it fry up evenly. So now that we have that, that's pretty much it, guys. The whole fry of the fish, we're going to serve it over a little bit of rice. And then we're going to make a little soy sauce based sauce for it that I will get into and show you all in just a minute. We're going to be heating that up on the stove, thickening up. The soy sauce right here and it should be pretty good but right now we're letting that oil come up to temperature we want about 375 and then we'll throw it in and get it cooking it shouldn't take more than four to five minutes to cook this thing we have oil brought up to about 375 right here it might be a touch higher but whenever we put in the fish it will bring the whole temperature of that oil down so it should be perfect we're gonna take our fish now we're gonna lay it in there one last look at it looks great and one important thing before dropping your fish into the oil is that you have to make sure it's completely dry if your fish is not dry this is gonna start popping like crazy it's gonna be dangerous so take your fish Right in there, look at that beautiful fry. Get the tail down in there, because that tail, all those fins and everything is gonna turn into a chip. As y'all can see right there, the fish is not completely covered in the oil. So if we were doing a deep fryer, it'd be completely covered. We wouldn't have to worry about flipping it. But since it is not completely covered, we're gonna cook it about two minutes on each side, two to three minutes until it gets golden brown. Flip it over, same thing on the other side, and then it'll be ready to take out. When we take it out, you either wanna lay it on a rack or on a piece of foil or something like that so you can let that grease drip off. So we're gonna make up a little sauce right here to go with our fish to lay on top of it. Kind of like an Asian style sauce, but we're just gonna improvise that. I don't have any exact recipes, nothing like that. But the base is gonna be soy sauce, like I said. So we'll just dump some of that in there, cover the bottom like that, maybe add a little bit more. Go in with some rice vinegar. With the sesame oil, be careful with this stuff. It's super strong, you don't wanna overpower your dish. Less, a teaspoon or less is all you need. Some garlic. Good. Ginger, freshen it up. And then we are gonna thicken it with a little bit of sweet soy glaze right here, which is basically just thickened soy sauce. So we'll add that in there to help thicken it up. And if we can't thicken it up with that, then what you could do is add some cornstarch and cold water, and that will thicken your sauce completely. But we'll get a spoon, stir that around, and then we're gonna put this on the heat and get it warm. And that's pretty much our whole sauce right there. We'll give it a taste test, adjust a little bit of stuff if we need to. Add some more vinegar if you want a little more bitter. Add some more soy glaze if you want a little sweeter, but Basically, that's it. About two minutes here, it's ready to flip. Yeah. Go ahead and give it a flip. We might need to grab another pair of tongs here. There we go. Just gently flip it over. Ooh, look at that nice golden brown. So now we'll let it go on this side for an additional two to three minutes and it'll be done and ready to take out. Okay, the fish has been frying here for a little while. It's time to take it off now. We're just gonna take it off and lay it on this foil. All I did was take foil, crunch up in my hands, unravel it again, and now you have all these little divots and pockets for the oil to drain off in. That is way better than putting it in paper towels. So we're gonna take our fish here. You all look at that nice golden brown on it. 
Ooh. Turn on as much oil as you can right now. Turn on the pan. And now we're just gonna let that beautiful fried fish right there cool down for a minute. And then once that sauce gets thickened up, we'll put this on a bed of rice, pour the sauce over it, and we'll bring it to taste out and tell you guys how good it is. So we're gonna go ahead and plate this up now. We have a nice bed of rice laid out on the plate right here. We're just gonna take the fish. We should be able to pick it up. It's not too hot. And lay it right over, just like that. Now we're gonna take our sauce. You can see this right here. It's not quite as thick and as syrup consistency as I'd like, but it should be good enough. And we're just gonna pour that over. And that looks awesome. We're gonna pour probably all of it. The more sauce, the better. We'll let it drip down onto that rice, just like that. Take some green onions for color here. As you can see, all the garlic and ginger right there piled up on the fish. Some green onions on it. And then a spritz of lemon just to freshen it up. And that's gonna be lunch. Let's go ahead and take it over to the table right here, sit down and give it a taste test for you guys. Okay, let's go ahead and try this out. Break open the chopsticks. We're just gonna get a piece from right here. Come check this out, let's see if it flakes off. Grab a piece from the middle, just like that. And as we expected, as we wanted, it came off perfectly. It pulls right away, no bones in there, beautiful white flaky meat. Let's give it a taste. Cheers. Once again, that is delicious. With that sauce on top of it, and with that crust, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, not fishy at all. I said this before and I'll say it again. Black drum to me is just as good, if not better than redfish. So like always, I'm gonna go ahead and absolutely destroy this plate because it is that good. But I wanna say thank y'all so much for watching. And also don't forget to check out High C, who sent me these boots right here. As you can see, they're dirty as heck. I've been wearing them all the time, especially with this weather recently. And they are super comfortable, like I said earlier in the video. So make sure to check them out. And you can also use code before to get 15% off over at their website, which I will have the link to that in the description down below. So don't forget to check them out. Big thank you for them for sending those over my way. That's all I have for y'all right now. Hit that like button, leave a comment down below. Subscribe if you're not already. If you are, like always guys, I thank you so very much. I'll see you on the next video, which will be uploaded on Wednesday for Wild Game Wednesday. So tune in for that, but until then, peace.